I see that you're upset, the froggy-faced man said. You're gosh darned right I'm upset. Listen, we will talk about this after I talk to him. He jabbed at the tablet, which clicked like a telephone being hung up. Michael. What? Here, drink some water. He couldn't move his arms very well, so he and Grandpa slopped water all down his chin. But enough got down that he could talk again. Hey, Grandpa. Hey, yourself. How you feeling, kiddo? Terrible. But alive. Yeah, that's the important part anyway. Where's Mom? She worried herself to sleep. He pointed over to where his mother was sitting and lying uncomfortably in one of those boxy hospital chairs. It looked like she'd almost fallen out of the chair, but stopped herself and fallen asleep just like that. Her hair was mussed up, and a few strands were clinging to the wall. Grandpa put a hand on his shoulder. Mighty brave thing you did yesterday, son. Yesterday? The moon was shining brightly through the window. You've been asleep, what, sixteen hours, roundabouts? He sat bolt upright on the bed. Charlotte, relax, kiddo, she's fine. But he couldn't relax. As soon as he laid back, a big patch on his back flared to sudden painful life. Doctors say you're mighty lucky to be alive. Where's Trent? Don't you worry about him. He isn't going to hurt anybody anymore. Is he? He couldn't even finish the question. Grandpa chuckled. Dead? No, no. But I heard through the grapevine the police got him off to a secure location. Police? He could just imagine how long it was going to take before Trent's super electric power snapped open the electronic locks on the cells and he zapped everybody in sight. Well, if I were going to disable a super kid, I'd throw him in a plastic and rubber room myself. And everybody in his complex will have some rubber damping suits, if it were up to me. What about Samuelson? Grandpa's cracked face crumpled. He's... he may pull through. The doctors are working real hard on him. But we should talk about you. You're fine. Fine, Michael replied, not shaken up. My body hurts. Grandpa looked ready to say something, but stopped and settled for, Okay, then. Why? Just, well, plenty of people aren't ready to meet a real active. Active? Yeah, somebody who's like a superhero. Active, as in the switch has been flipped. Why don't you just call them supers or something? Well, maybe we just figured if we call them super, they'll either be superheroes or super villains, and nobody likes a super villain. Michael could only say, Hmm, Grandpa had a point. Anyway, if you want to talk about anything, you just swing on by and have a sit down with your dinosaur of a grandfather. Michael laughed, You're not that old. I'm old enough. I've got a skedaddle, but I'm around. You come on over and I'll beat you at cribbage a couple of times, all right? Okay, Michael said. He wanted to ask about the fat man on the tablet and how Grandpa knew exactly how many students were going to lad chems. But at that moment, his mother screamed and threw herself across the room at him. Grandpa winked at him, smiled, and headed out. He had the rest of the night to read and the next day was Sunday, so he spent it recovering and trying not to talk too much about it when his mother was grilling him. She seemed to think it was somehow his fault that he was nearest to the half-naked man and his fault that Charlotte had been in danger. Still, she was in tears every time she reminded him that he was still alive, like he didn't know that. Charlotte poked her head in just after dinner time. Hey, she said. Hey, you okay? I guess you got it pretty bad from that jerk. Yeah, he said, trying to act cool. I'm totally fine. Totally fine. A hundred percent, she grinned. And yet you're still here. That's strange. Well, uh, the doctors, they're just being careful. Oh, okay. Cool. Hey, listen, I'm going to head out and pick up some Taco Bell. Um, is that allowed? Of course not, she said. Anyway, the food here, bleh. So he decided why not and asked her to pick him up something that sounded good. When she brought it back, they sat down and ate until one of the hospital orderlies sent Charlotte back to her room. He had Monday off for Marcus Patterson Day, which was great. Watching movies, reading, and eating his favorite food were all way better than facing a broken school and the idea that his principal might be dead.